Hi, I'm Jerry Ford from Attic Treasures in Occoquan, Virginia, and this month's Embroidery Club we're going to make these two lovely scrubby washcloths. They're made up of just ordinary terry cloth, some nylon netting, and your embroidery machine. So let's get started. Okay, I've loaded the design into my machine. First we're going to start with the acorn. And so I've loaded the design into my machine and brought it up. I have put a layer of wash away stabilizer, where's the, the mesh stabilizer, and I've hooped my white toweling. What you want to do is you, for this you want to change your bobbins, wind a bobbin for each color change so that it'll look the same on both sides. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to first put my salvi on the top because this uh, terry cloth has a texture and I'm going to pin this in place just to keep it from from getting caught in the wrapping itself around the foot and I'm going to be stitched and I'm just pinning this outside of the hoop just mostly just to keep it to tame it and keep it from getting caught under the foot and wrapping itself and making a big ugly mess. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and embroidery and now it's just ready to st stitch. The first color is green. I'm just going to hit go and let it stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch this off camera because it's kind of boring to watch stitching. Okay I'm ready to go to color stop number two which is the stem of the acorn and I am going to change the bobbin and I'm going to use black so I'm changing the bobbin as well as the uh, needle thread okay, and then I'll put the hoop back in stitch the second color stop and again I'll stitch this off camera Okay, so next what I'm going to do is now we're going to be doing the acorn, which the scrubby is actually like a, starts out as a reverse applique. So I'm going to put a beige color in the bobbin as well as the needle. And it's going to stitch the outlines. Color stop number three on this acorn was the outline of the cutout that we have to, to do. So I'm going to remove the hoop from the machine and I'm carefully going to pick this up and I'm going to cut through. Don't want to cut through the stabilizer and I only want to cut through the terry cloth and the salvi. Put my finger underneath of it and I will trim it away. And I want to trim fairly close to the stitch line. Okay, I have cut out the uh, just the terry cloth. And the next thing I'm going to do is put the put the uh, tooling, or not tooling, this is just plain ordinary nylon netting and I need eight layers like this. So actually you just need to cover it and it needs eight layers. So if you have the beige, you can now I'm going to just pin it in place outside of the stitching area or just hold it in because now it's going to do the tack down. Okay. I'm just going to hold this down while it does the tack down stitch. While it, and it just does a double stitch. So this is still stitch color stop number four. And we 
turn those there. And now, once again, I'm going to take the hoop out of the machine and cut away the excess from outside. The excess of the netting. Return the hoop to the machine and stitch color stop number five. And this is going to be with the beige and this is my tack down stitch. Sealing in the edges of the netting. Okay. Okay, and then it seals it in. Okay, I'm going to continue to let this stitch offline. Okay, next I'm going to stitch color stops number uh, six and seven. And that's going to be this a little bit darker brown for the cap of the acorn. And then I'll stitch out those and then we will be all done. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and stitch the cap of the acorn and I'll go ahead and stitch this offline because this will take another oh, 15 minutes to stitch out. Okay, it's all finished. So now I can remove the pins, remove the salvy, I'll probably cut away most of this salvy and then I'm just going to dip it in cold water and dissolve the rest of the away. Then this one will be all done. So, just like last time, I've taken a 12 inch by 12 inch washcloth and this is just plain terry cloth and I'm using again the wash away stabilizer and this is the called the dissolve away mesh stabilizer so I've loaded the design into my machine and this particular design has six color stops so I'm going to wind bobbins the same color as the needle so I'm going to change my bobbin every time I change the color and the needle that way the uh, scrubby will look the same from both sides. So I'm going to wind bobbins the same color as the needle. So I'm going to change my bobbin every time I change the color and the needle. That way the uh, scrubby will look the same from both sides. First of all we're going to stitch out the leaves. So I am going to uh, put green in the bobbin and green in the needle. Because I am sewing on terry cloth which has a nap, I'm going to use a topper. And it can be either the water soluble topper, like the Hydra Melt or Salvi, or you can use the press away topping. It will not stitch as pretty and I, uh, it, without it. And I like to tack down this, this Salvi in the top. And I'm pinning outside of the hoop just to hold it in place because this stuff has a tendency to wrap around the foot causing a nice jam. So it's ready to stitch. Okay and so now we're going to stitch the first color. I've turned the light off it was a little bit bright there. And it's going to stitch out the leaf first. Uh, this design takes a little while to stitch out so I'm, what I'm going to do is let this stitch off camera because that's kind of boring to watch the machine just stitch and stitch and stitch. See you back in a few minutes. Okay, it's finished the green and now it's going to do a, either a darker green or a black. So I'm going to choose a black and be sure to use a polyester thread with these scrubbies because a rayon is going to fade because this is something that's going to receive repeated washings. So you want to go ahead and use a polyester thread for this for all of the threads. Okay, and 
This is color stop number two. So we'll lower the presser foot in. Now it'll do the leaves. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. It's going to stitch out the sunflower petals. Okay, this is color stop number three. Now, if you have a machine that does not cut the jump stitches, be sure at, between colors to jump, cut the jump stitches on the back as well as the front when you're trimming away the jump stitches. Do that between each color. Well, now, this is going to stitch for quite a while, so what I'm going to do is stitch this off camera. Okay, it's finished sewing the petals. I'm going to take the gold out. And I'm going to go back to black. Uh, next is going to be a stitch that's going to do the just the little detail lines in the middle of the petals. Take the gold out. There we go. Now remember if you are using uh, your embroidery thread in your bobbin that you want to make sure that you also change your uh, bobbin case to use the sewing bobbin case rather than the embroidery one because the tension is set a little bit tighter on that embroidery bobbin case. And now for color stop number four, which I'm going to use black to do the, the little veins in the middle of, of the petals. Okay, I'll be back in just a little bit. Now with this last color stop that did the veins, also did the placement for the embroidery or for the applique, which is going to be the uh, the netting that's going in the middle. So what I'm going to do here is remove the hoop from the machine, and I'm going to carefully cut out the terry cloth. Sometimes, and, and also the salvi, I don't need the salvi now, I can just pull that away. And sometimes it helps to just grab it in the center and just make a little cut. I don't want you to trim the, away, just the terry cloth is all we're going to be trimming away. And for this it does help to have a curved scissor. This curved scissor is really helpful. I'm going to hold this terry cloth up and I'm going to cut away the terry cloth as close to that stitching line as I can get. Uh, sometimes it helps to put this down on a table to get this as close as you can. I'll go ahead and finish cut. See, you want to cut. You're leaving the stabilizer, you just want to cut away this, this terry cloth. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this off camera. Okay, as you have seen, I've cut very, very close to this stitching line. Okay, now I've put the hoop back on the machine, and this time I'm going to put the scrubby fabric down so it's like a reverse, first is a reverse applique, which you cut out your, your terry cloth, then you can put the applique fabric on the top, which is going to be scrubby fabric, and all that consists of is eight layers of plain old ordinary knitting. Not bridal tooling, you want the coarse knitting comes it's very very cheap um, if you get a half yard of it this will do tons of or actually you could get away with just getting a quarter yards yard of this stuff and it'll last for a very long time so I'm just going to tack it in a couple places make sure that this tooling all the layers of the tooling cover cover uh, the outside of the of the uh, terry cloth I'm just going to hold this down just for a couple of, until it goes all the way around, just to tack it. It goes around twice. Again, I'm going to release the hoop a little bit. This one I don't have to hoop, I have to cut quite as close as I did the terry cloth. So I'm going to cut all this excess outside of the stitching line of the netting. Bit. Let me trim that a little 
more right there. Okay. And this is the last stitch, last color stop. And I am simply going to let it stitch down. It's going to give a good satin stitch to seal in the edges of the netting. And now, almost all done. Okay, it's all finished stitching out. So I am ready to remove this from the frame from the machine. I'm going to just tear off the water soluble stabilizer off the top. Or this, I'm just going to tear off the topping. I'm going to take it out of the hoop. And I'm going to cut all of these little stitches on the back. And, and ideally I should have cut all of these little jumps and these extra little tails after every color stop, but I didn't. So you'll have to do it now. So that's unsightly. These are unsightly on the back. You can see that a little better. See, that's kind of unsightly. So I will go out and, and clip all these little extra threads out of the way, including this one. A little knot right there, so I will pick that out. And I'm going to cut away most of this stabilizer. Just rough cut it around because we're going to dissolve the rest of it away. And just put it in some water, in some warm water, warm clear water, under the sink. Squeeze out the excess, let it dry and now it's ready to use. I finish clipping. I'm just going to cut it. You could actually leave it there except for I find this tends to have a rather strong scent when you're dissolving it so the more I can get out of here before I put it in the water the better. Okay, throw this excess away. I could take this out, but it's just going to dissolve in the water. Finish the edge of the towel however you want to. I've used the, the wave stitch on my uh, ovation. And now I have this really cute, and now I have this really cute dish cloth for doing the dishes during the holiday or any time you want to just make doing dishes a lot more interesting. If you have any questions, give us a call at Attic Treasures in, or So Easy Sewing in Occoquan, Virginia. The phone number is 703-490-1536. If you'd like a, like a copy of the sunflower design or the acorn design in PES format, you can contact me directly at waltzquilt at yahoo.com. Until next time, have a good Thanksgiving and see you later. Bye.